God's people. Good morning, God's people. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Hallelujah. We're so grateful to see all of you that have made your way out to the Lord's house today and those who have dialed in online and for those who will be viewing us later uh, via our YouTube channel. We're great, so great, very grateful that you all uh, took time out of your schedule. Amen. To come and uh, lift up the name of Jesus with us. Amen. I'm not going to prolong the time. I'm going to ask now if Minister David Proctor will come now and share some words of, of exhortation off of prayer. And he also is going to render us a semantic selection. Amen. So let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise as he comes. Minister Proctor. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I'm grateful as always to be with my church family one more time. I'm thankful for another day that the Lord has blessed us with. Psalms 118, 24 says, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. You see, each day is a rich and precious gift from God with new grace and new mercies for us to experience. Scripture declares in Psalms 133:1, it says, behold how good and pleasant it is for brothers, and I'm going to say, and sisters, to dwell together in unity. The very thought that we've come together on this Sunday morning is an indication of God's goodness. God has declared that it is good and pleasant for us to dwell together in unity. I'm glad that we have a relationship as brothers and sisters in Christ that where we have a place to come that we can worship together. See, it comes all with the design purpose for us to set aside our individual concerns and cares, if only for these few hours, to hear a solid word from our pastor, to sing a song of praise, and the ability to interact with one another in love. Now, the definition of unity in the Bible, you'll find it says that unity is the original language, which means oneness. Mm-hmm. In Ephesians 4, verses 1 through 6, and this is from the contemporary English version, it says, As a prisoner of the Lord, I beg you to live in a way that is worthy of the people God has chosen to be his own. Always be humble and gentle. Patiently put up with each other like that. Patiently put up with each other and love each other. Try your best to let God's spirit keep your hearts united. Do this by living at peace. All of you are part of the same body. There is only one spirit of God, just as you were given one hope when you were chosen to be God's people. We have only one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. There is one God who is the father of all people. Not only is God above all others, but he works by using all of us, and he lives in all of us. The key to understanding this and other statements about love is to know that this love, the Greek word for love is agape, and I'm sure we're all familiar with that. But it's not just a matter of emotion as it is in doing things for the benefit of another person. That is having an unselfish concern for, uh, for another and an, an unwillingness to seek the best for another. Agape love is the love that God has for humankind which is the reciprocal love that we should have for one another. The reason I stay on the topic of love is that and unity is because the true meaning of the relationship that we have with each other is found in love and unity. I talk about love and unity because from what I see, that's the missing element that we have in fulfilling the mandate from God that we love our neighbors as ourselves. Paul is telling us that since we are God's chosen people, we ought to act like it. <laughs> He's saying that we should always maintain a spirit of humility to be gentle and patient with one another. I know that takes, some, that takes some real God right there. Some of us may have been bruised and mistreated and offended in the, on this, along this journey, even among the people of church that you go to. But I'm not speaking specifically about our church. I'm talking about the church as a whole. Paul is telling us that we have to put up with one another 
and love each other with that agape, the God kind of love. He's telling us to allow God's spirit to keep our hearts united, having a heart that is open to admit that we are not always right. We must face the fact that we must resist the inclination to speak ill of someone or perceive them incorrectly. We call love understanding one another in order for us to love like God wants us to love. The scripture tells us to judge not that we be not judged, right? We have to love as God loves in order to have the peace that God is talking about. Because when it's all said and done, we are all one body. There's only one God, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. We are all that we are only by the grace of God. Verse 6, and I'm closing right here, it says, There's one God who is the Father of all people. Not only is God above all others, but he works in using all of us, and he lives in all of us. So I, too, exhort you today, walk in the spirit of unity and love. He is worthy. Praise him in spite of how you feel, knowing that within your heart that he's done great and mighty things on our behalf. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to enter into this time of prayer, but I want to first uh, name off the, the people that are on our prayer list for this week. We have listed on our prayer list Calvin Atkins and family. We have Deacon Marvin Bell. Of course, Deacon Marvin Bell is here. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Renee Coleman. Pete Nixon. April Harris. Carrie Harris. Paul Jackson, Jr. Zora Lane, Yanita McLeod and family. Of course, we're going to always lift up Mother Bessie Nathaniel. I know she just celebrated a birthday this past week, and we praise God for her. Deronia Thomas, Celeste Williams, Jabari Williams, all that we're going to continue to keep in prayer, the victims of the California wildfires, the people who were affected in Haiti, uh, and uh, all those that have that are still remaining in Afghanistan, and so on. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, God, we bless you for another day. We bless you, God, for allowing us to be in service this morning, Lord God. We pray, God, that the names that we've lifted up, God, that you would re reach them right now at their point of need, Lord God, whether that be sickness, whether that be despair, whatever it is, Lord, we lift them up to you right now, Lord God. We lift up right now those people that are on the line, Lord God, that are listening in on this call, Lord God, and that will be watching it later on, God, that you would bless their households, Lord God. We pray that you would, you would bless those that are in the sanctuary this morning, Lord God. But Father, we know that there is no distance in prayer. And so, Lord God, we lift up everybody, Lord God. We pray for those that are on the way, Lord God, because of the inclement weather, Lord God. We pray that you bring them here safely, Lord God. We pray, God, that this service is, is yielded to you, Lord God, that the Holy Spirit would have his way in this place today, Lord God, that you would bless our pastor, Lord God, with the word of wisdom, with the word of power in the name of Jesus. We bless you right now, God, for, for how you have kept us all this week, Lord God. We bless you, God, for safety, Lord God. We bless you for what the promises that you've made to us, Lord God, and we are just thankful, Lord God, that we can say that we belong to you. And we bless you right now and give this service to you in the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. How many has ever gone through a storm? Gone through a time where you didn't know how you were going to make it? Well, let me tell you, there's an anchor that we have found in solid in God. Go with me as I sing. Hallelujah. Though the storm keeps on raging in my life, 
And sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day Still that hope that lies within is reassured As I keep my eyes upon the distant shore I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared But if the storms don't cease And if the winds keep on blowing My soul has been Anchored in the Lord Though the storms keep on raging in my life And sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day Still that hope that lies within is reassured As I keep my eyes upon the distant shore I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared But if the storms don't cease And if the winds keep on blowing in my life My soul has been Anchored in the Lord oh, I realize that sometimes in this life We're gonna be tossed By the waves and the currents that seems so fierce This is what I found out But in the word of God I've got an anchor And it keeps me steadfast And unmovable Despite the tide But if If the storm if the storms don't cease And just in case The winds Keep right on Blowing in my life My soul My soul Been anchored In In the Lord In the Lord In the Lord In the Lord, in the Lord, in the Lord. Mm. Just see the billows may roll, the breakers may dash. I shall not sway because he holds me fast. Though dark the day, there may be clouds in the sky. I know it's all right, cause Jesus is not set my soul. Y'all say it with me. My soul, my soul, my soul The billows may roll, the breakers may dash I shall not sway because he holds me fast Though dark the day, 
There may be clouds in the sky. I know it's all right because Jesus is not set my soul. My soul. Mm-hmm. My, 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 my soul. My soul been anchored. Thank you, Jesus, for the life you've given. I know I can hold on because you're with me. Though dark to taste, there may be clouds in the sky. I know it's all right because my soul has been anchored. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord another hand clap of prayer. <clears throat> Ooh, that, that's mighty pitiful for the Lord. <laughs> Come on, give God some praise. Give him glory. Give him honor. He's worthy. Worthy of all the glory and honor that we can muster. Amen? Amen. Anybody ever had any billows rolling in their lives? We might have to have you sing again. Man. Technical difficulties. Amen. Well, we'll get it then. We'll get it then. Amen. 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 My apologies for that. All, all of that. Look, that's the reason you need to be in the house. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I, I certainly apologize for that. We, we'll have to get that done. So, Mr. Proctor, we're going to have to have you up, back up again soon. You already went back to back, huh? Amen. Maybe we'll go for a trifecta. Trifecta. Amen. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Well, again, we're grateful to see all of you who are here today, those of you who are, have called in and those who will be viewing uh, our, on our YouTube channel later. Welcome to all of you. We're so grateful whenever we have an opportunity to be in the Lord's house and among the Lord's people. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you. Lord God, we praise you, we magnify you, and we glorify you. Lord God, we thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all of the many blessings you have already prepared for us that we have yet to experience. So God, we, as we enter now into this preaching, this teaching moment, I ask now that you would use me as a vessel to speak a word of joy, a word of peace, a word of inspiration to these I people. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength, my redeemer, my everything, my all in all. And the people of God said amen, amen. and amen, and amen, amen, amen. You know, one of the things we have the benefit of, uh, those who uh, have called in, they get a chance to hear the service from start to finish. The only thing that won't be on our recording, uh, our, our audio recording, will be the uh, words of exhortation, the prayer, and the song. But if you want to get a taste of it, go to our YouTube channel later, amen? And you get a chance to see them live and in living color, amen? Hallelujah. Amen. I thank God for blessing us in so many ways, so many ways. Amen. Well, uh, commencing uh, on the first Sunday in October, first Sunday in October, we will begin a series speaking from the theme, Extreme Makeovers. Extreme Makeovers. Uh, Y'all seen that show where they go to somebody's house and it's a house, but it could it could stand some makeover. Amen, amen. Well, I know from the notes I already have, there's going to be at least six sermons in this series. (laughs) At least six, amen. Maybe more. So I would strongly recommend that that you make yourself available to listen to every one of them. As always, I will share some spiritual principles, but I'm also going to share some practical and pragmatic principles that can be used in your personal life, your professional life, in addition to your spiritual life. Amen? Amen. The Word of God works in every arena. Amen. Amen. Being in this pandemic since uh, mid-March of 2020 until now, and who knows how much longer, there are certainly some aspects of our lives that need a makeover. Amen? 
Amen. Everybody didn't say amen. I, let, maybe I just need to make it personal. That's some stuff I need to make over. Amen. 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 I know I got some pandemic pounds. Oh, Lord. Lord, how much that, that need to be made over. Amen. Not made over, gotten rid of. Amen. Amen. I, I, many of you heard that. Uh, it's an older contemporary gospel song now by Daryl Coley. It said, he's preparing me for something uh, I'm not ready for right now. But that's what the Lord is doing. He's preparing us. Come on now, in that song he said he's arranging us. And then he stepped back and he had to sometime, come on, rearrange us. It, it goes on to say he's pruning us and, and he's purging us. He, he's training us and, and he's tuning us, amen, for something we might not be ready for right now. But oh, have mercy. Listen, we already know from Psalms 139 and 14 that we are fearfully and, come on, help me, Wonderful, y'all been reading. Wonderfully made. Amen. Somebody look, look at somebody, point at somebody across the room and say, I'm fierce. Amen. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. But listen to this. After this makeover, after this makeover, the devil's going to have his hands full dealing with the top partners because we know who we are and we know whose we are. Amen. Glory to God. You know, this COVID-19 with all these new variants cropping up, it's a serious matter. It's a serious matter, and it's causing chaos and confusion across the country because, unfortunately, it has politicized, been politicized so much that it's causing people to take sides uh, to, 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 uh, as to its validity. And that coupled with, of course, valid information, but unfortunately, erroneous information being spewed out over the airways seemingly nonstop, our minds are in a constant state of flux. So we definitely need a word from the Lord, amen? So today's message will be the introduction for the Extreme Makeover Series, amen? Stand with me if you will. Get a chance to stretch a little bit. Stand and we're going to read the foundational text that's going to be taken from Jeremiah chapter 18, <clears throat> verses 1 through 6. And there you find these words. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. Let me pause right here and share this tidbit. There will be times when the Lord does not speak to you directly, mm. but he'll send his word through a messenger. Huh. Sometimes he'll send it through the pastor. Sometimes he'll send it through a spouse. Sometimes he'll send it through a friend. So be careful not to develop such a cavalier attitude and become dismissive of those who come to you with advice because they just might have the word that you need. Somebody might need to hear that. Let, let's move on to, to verse 3 because I'm trying to preach while y'all standing up here. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, making something at the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel, and it seemed good to the potter to make. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Top, no, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter? Said the Lord, Look as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. God's word for God's people. You know, the story of the potter, it, it's a classic, and no doubt many of you have heard uh, sermons and Bible study lessons about it. However, I'm going to take uh, what I consider somewhat of a non-traditional approach as I expound upon the text during this series. So you Bible scholars, hear me out before you start frowning and folding your arms in judgment and and looking at me sideways, <laughs> amen. I need you to pray with me that I can work this out because there are valuable lessons to be learned at the potter's house. We, when we look at the potter, we, we look at a guy whose original plan failed. So this message should teach us how to navigate through our own personal dilemma when our plan A does not work out like we thought it would. For example, what do you do when what you really thought was going to happen didn't even come close to happening? What do you do when all of your present options seem like bad choices? What do you do when the perks you thought you would receive were not sufficient 
for the task at hand. So as we get deeper into this, uh, uh, this series, I want you to see the potter as an example of a visionary who is relentless in his pursuit to manifest his desire. The potter had a desire to make a vessel, and he started out with a plan, but the plan, Robert, became marred. But even so, he does not give up. He was able to implement an alternate plan so that the object of his faith still came to fruition. I don't believe anyone here would disagree that this is how life actually is. Because if you've been walking with the Lord for any length of time and you've been using your faith, then you understand that faith is not magic. As I previously stated, many times what you thought was going to happen didn't happen at all. So we want to learn from the potter how to be relentless in our pursuit, in our personal lives, in our spiritual lives, in our professional lives. And sometimes this means we might have to revise our strategies to help us move forward to success. With regards to this pandemic, it has caused this economy to vacillate to the degree that many companies and organizations have been adversely affected with regards to personnel and financially, <clears throat> even churches. I've talked to pastors and church leaders who are feeling the crunch. But unlike the world, this is not a time for the body of Christ to get depressed. The Bible says in Romans 12 and 2a, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye, come on class, transform how? By the renewing of your mind. <coughs> See, because my mind has been transformed by the word of God, I understand that the blessings of God are not predicated on the intensity of this pandemic, pandemic, is not predicated on the instability of the economy or any other adverse situation I encounter. You see, uh, Parish, when I read John 10 and 10b, it says, I, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I don't recall reading a contingency clause that said if the economy is good or if there's no pandemic or if there's no other uh, adverse situation going on, then you can have an abundant life. No, no, no. For the believer, come on, wave at me, believers. For the believer, you can live an abundant life even in the midst of the vicissitudes of life. Somebody ought to say thank you, Lord, right there. You know, back at the time when the economy was thriving, you really didn't have to exercise your faith to make it. You can make it just by working the world system. But when the economy got so bad that banks needed to be bailed out, and they still wouldn't lend you any money, the believer was still all right because we could exercise our faith and make it. So now is the time that you've got to stand on the principles that you have learned about faith. Now is the time we will experience the supernatural manifestations of God. If we hold on and if we hold out. The Bible reminds us in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, for we walk by <coughs> faith and not by sight. So we never uh, want to uh, 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 govern ourselves uh, by what we see in the natural, about what we feel. Because I've told you many times before, feelings are tricky. Feelings will mess you up sometimes. Amen? Now from the potter's perspective, we will learn that we might have to revise our strategy along the way or even develop a new strategy. See, the pursuit of my dream, Rennie, will not change. However, somebody say however. My methods might need to change in order for me to finish both spiritual and personal desires. These are the lessons we'll learn from the potter who is seemingly unfazed when the, when the clay became marred. He doesn't panic, he doesn't worry, he doesn't start to complain. He just keep on working. He just keeps on working. This should be a lesson for all of us. When your plan A fails, don't start tripping. You may have had all your hope in plan A, but you must realize that when your plan A fails, God is not surprised. <laughs> you, you might be, but God is not surprised. And he is still ready, and he is still able to show up and perform supernaturally if you invite him into your situation. 
Hallelujah. Now, I know most of you top partners are familiar with this subject of faith, but because I, I teach and preach on it all the time. But even so, the Spirit has directed me to put you in remembrance of a few principles of faith before we proceed too deep into this extreme makeover series. Now, for some, this will be new information. For others, it will be a, a refresher. But for everybody, it ought to be good. Hallelujah. Now, now why, do you, why do we repeatedly go over things that we already know? Well, the answer is in the, in the, te in the scripture. 2 Peter 1 and 12. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in the present truth. See, for the dreamers in the house. In the dreamers in the house. Any dreamers on the line, I hope also, listen, listen, God will cause your dream to come to pass relative to the development of your faith. One of the advantages we have as believers is that we operate on a better system than does the world. We are not limited to what the world system says we ought to do. We use the kingdom system of faith because faith is what invokes God to show up and move supernaturally in our lives. Listen, I've discovered that there are several dynamic profiles of faith. We're going to examine a few of them here today. There is the first one we'll look at is saving faith. Everybody says saving faith. This is the faith I exercise to get saved. Ephesians 2 and 8a says we are saved by grace through faith. See, God loved us enough so that even when we're out there sinning on a regular basis, <laughs> he allocated us a measure of faith to get us saved. Amen. That, that deserves a hallelujah right there. That deserves a thank you, Lord, a praise, Lord. That deserves something. Don't y'all sit and look at me with your little holy self like you don't know what I'm talking about. Well, we was out there doing all week. No, let me, let me just move on. Saving faith. The next one is submission faith. So, say submission faith. This is the kind of faith that Peter demonstrated in Luke chapter 5. Most of you know the story. Peter and his crew had been fishing all night long, and they caught nothing. So they had come back in. They were washing their nets. They were getting ready to go out. But Jesus wanted to preach, and the crowd had pressed in on him so close that he couldn't get the uh, perspective uh, that he wanted. So he asked Peter to let me use your boat. So he cast out the boat, and after he used Peter's boat for a waterfront pulpit, he told him, uh, I'm not going to let y'all give me. So, look, go, go, y'all go back out and fish again. I'm sure Peter said, look, I ain't just start fishing today. I've, I've been doing this for a minute. And even though Peter was reluctant, he obeyed and was tremendously best. So just by submitting yourself and are adhering to the word of God, some awesome manifestations, come on now, will occur in your life. Amen. The next one we want to look at is surrogate faith. <coughs> Say surrogate faith. This is faith used on behalf of another. Probably a lot of us have done this also. There are several examples in the Bible where people came to Jesus on behalf of someone who was not present. One example is found in, in Matthew 8 when the centurion came to Jesus and asked for healing for one of his servants. Again, this is a familiar story to most of you. Jesus was speaking. He was doing his thing wherever he was. After he finished, the centurion came and said, look, I got, a, I got one of my servants who at home is sick. So Jesus had finished. He said, so I'll go to your house with you. The servant said, no, no. I, I see that you're a man of authority. And see, I'm a man of authority. And I know when I speak, when I say something, things got to happen. Oh, Y'all not hit me. When I say something, things got to happen. So I'm looking at you. And the words that you speak, I see when you speak, Something got to happen. So you don't have to go with me. Just speak a word. Hallelujah. Oh, that ought to be encouraging for somebody here. You might have somebody in another state or even another country, and you want to be there. You can just speak a word. Oh, my God. You can, there is no distance in the spirit realm. So you can speak a word, and things in Detroit got to change. Come on. You can speak a word, and things in Texas got to change. You can speak a word, things in Oxford got to change. Speak a word. Speak a word. And when he said that Jesus, look, I'm sure he was walk, they were walking. I'm just using my sanctified imagination. They were walking along. He said, just speak a word. Jesus said, what did you say? 
He told his disciples, I haven't seen faith like this anywhere in Israel. Then he told him in Matthew 8 and 13 B, as you have believed, oh my God, let it be done for you. Somebody need, eh, I see, that gave me chills too. As you have believed, mm, so shall it be done for you. Hallelujah. Next one we want to look at is special faith. Say special faith. In Galatians 5 and 22, it talks about one of the gifts of the Spirit is faith. This is when God plants the ability to believe in your heart. This is a supernatural ability to believe without any physical evidence. I got a personal example of this one. Me and Lady Nate and Mother Nate and Papa here, we came into this facility in 2002. And we were looking at it. We said, oh, this would be a great church. A great church to start, to start it. Understand, I was still pastoring in, in California, 2002. 2002. Top one started until 2005. Y'all don't hear me. So he said, this would be a great place to start. So, so, you know, I had come back in 99 in, in and, and did my, my dad's eulogy. And he had asked me, had I ever thought about coming back home? And I told him, no, because I hadn't thought about it. I hadn't thought about it. We hadn't thought about it. But we, we, you know, after this, we, we looked at this and understand <clears throat> in 2002 when we looked at it, we moved into this facility in 2006 and 2009 we bought it. Y'all know hear me? Seven years later. He may not come when you want him. Come on now. But he's always on time. Always on time. Next faith we want to look at is systematic faith. Now, in Mark uh, chapter 11 is, is where we see the classic teaching about faith. Very familiar scripture that I use almost every time I talk about faith. Mark 11, verses 23 and 24. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when you pray. Not when you start to see it coming to pass. Whatsoever thing you desire when you pray. Somebody say when you pray. <coughs> Believe that you receive them and you should have them. So I see a process here. Faith is not mystical or magical. Neither is it just a hoping and a praying that God will show up and do something. It's a system of Asking, believing, confessing, demonstrating, and expecting God to show up and show up. Amen. In case you missed it, there was five steps, A through E. Asking, believing, confessing, demonstrating, and expecting. Now, the last uh, level of faith we want to examine is stimulus faith. Stimulus faith. That's like a stimulus check. That stimulus check could empower you to do things that you possibly couldn't do before you got it. There are some things you couldn't do with it before you got that stimulus check. Amen. Uh, this is the kind of faith that Peter had when he saw Jesus walking on the water, doing the supernatural. Peter wanted to walk on the water too. So he asked, he asked him, PJ, look, can I do that? Listen, there was no redemptive value in Peter walking on the water. But just because he wanted it, Jesus was excited to see that Peter wanted to do something over and above the norm. So Jesus said to Peter, come. He just said one, one word, come. And with one word, the law of gravity had to take a back seat. Hallelujah. You know why? The power of God's word supersedes natural laws. Oh, my God. Oh, that's rich. The power of God's word supersedes any natural or physical law. So sometimes when you ask God for something, this is a passage that we go to all the time, God will do exceedingly, help me, abundantly, what else? Above all <coughs> that you ask a thing. Amen. Sometimes we ask God for a car, and he'll give us a new car. One, say amen, Amar. Amen. Amen. He'll give you a brand new car. Amen. Hallelujah. Stimulus faith. That's deciding not to live like the crowd. I believe that you're here today. 
I believe that you dialed in on the conference call because you wanted to receive a word that would empower you to change your life for the better. And I need to let you know, hear me good now, when you exercise stimulus faith, or, or any faith for that matter, it never goes unrewarded. Amen. Amen. Just keep on doing that, BJ. It'll, 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 it'll pass. It'll. When you exercise faith, it never goes unrewarded. The latter part of Hebrews 11 and 6b reveals that God is a rewarder of those who diligently, who faithfully seek him. When God sees that you're bold enough to want it, he gets excited right along with you. And he will empower you to do what you have not been able to do before. Now, now listen, when I'm operating in faith, I should have five justifiable expe uh, expectations. Number one, a plan of action. A plan of action. I expect God to provide me with a plan of attack. Amen? Amen? The second one is the wisdom of God. This is the correct application of the knowledge I receive. I believe most of us here have heard, heard the saying that knowledge is power. Well, that's not entirely accurate because knowledge do, does you no good if you don't know how to apply it or uh, if you refuse to apply it to get the, 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 the situation, the results that you desire from the situation. A more accurate statement is applied knowledge is power. The next thing we need to look for is the favor of God. Glory to God. This is when God will send someone into your life to use their power, their influence, their abilities, and their resources to help you accomplish a task in your personal life in your professional life or your spiritual life. And then the next thing we ought to look for are the miracles of God. This is when God works supernaturally to bring my desires to pass. And the last thing we need to always look for is the strength to endure until change comes. Since we understand that faith is a process and most times it does not work overnight, we must have the intestinal fortitude to continue to practice the process until the manifestation appears. We all know that faith comes by hearing, but it's released in the earth by the words from our mouths. According to Mark 4 and 28b, faith manifestations come progressively. First the blade, then the ear, and then the full corn in the ear. So when I'm standing in faith for something, Cecil, I don't get upset when I don't see the full de desire immediately. I don't get upset. I don't curse my plant and dig it up because it's not fully grown. You know what I do? I start shouting when I see the blade. Yeah. Hallelujah! <laughs> yeah, but you know what? You know what, uh, uh, Sister Sandra, in this impatient society we live in, if people just see the blade, they start doubting God. They start down now. Where are my horticulturists? My, God, my, my folk who plant stuff. <laughs> look, look. I don't believe you plant today and expect a full harvest tomorrow, or uh, next week, or uh, next month, uh, unless it's one of them chill pets. And you know, that mean. <laughs> the same is true when you're planting seeds of faith. It takes time to see the manifestation of what you believe in God for. God can and sometimes will bring things to pass in an instant. But most of the time, it's a process. So stop being anxious. Come on, put some perm on your attitude and relax. <laughs> because God, God is in charge. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got something for everybody. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, part of the faith process is the faith fight. The faith fight. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 6 and 12a, fight the good fight of faith. Now, I don't know how you perceive a good fight, but a good fight for me, Marvin, is a fight that I win. I might get a few lumps, I might get a few bumps, but a good fight for me is a fight that I win. 
The faith fight occurs when what I'm believing God for seems to be delayed. For example, I've asked God for my friendship to be fixed, but it's seemingly getting more and more dysfunctional all the time. I've asked God for a financial breakthrough, but I just got laid off. I've asked God for peace, but every place I turn, it seems to be chaos and confusion. I've asked God for healing, but it seems like I'm getting worse. I've asked God for deliverance, but I just can't seem to break free from this destructive and debilitating habit or relationship. When you are in a faith fight, the devil will start to sow seeds of faith and fear and doubt in your mind as to what you believe in God for will not come to pass. The devil tries to convince you that God won't do this for you. You see, the devil can't touch your spirit, so he attacks you in the soulish realm. Y'all know this. I've shared this many times. The soul is where the five components are, your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect, and your imagination. The faith fight actually occurs in the mind. The mind I call the captain of the soulish realm. Why do I say that? Because the devil knows if he can get a fiery dot in your mind and you dwell on it for any length of time, then your will, your emotion, your intellect, and imagination will soon take its cues and direction from your mind and soon follow. So when it comes to operating in faith, it can't be treated like an emergency kit and you just try to use it when you're in a jam. Exercising your faith must become a lifestyle. Just like your body, you gotta exercise your faith for it to get stronger. Come on, if you don't do anything to get this body stronger, you'll still have a body, but it won't be like you want it to be. Come on now, living witness. Any more witnesses? Y'all better raise your hand like I'm not the only one. Hey man, y'all trying to make me feel bad. <laughs> Hey, you got to exercise this faith. The last clause in Romans 1 and 17 said, the just shall live by faith. So when I come up against an obstacle, when I run into a hurdle, this is not the time for me to throw in the towel. When trouble comes, and it will come, because the devil knows how to find you. Trouble knows your address, your home phone, your work phone, your cell phone, your email address, your Facebook account, Twitter, Instagram, Skype, the no devil knows how to find you. He doesn't have to look for you. So when trouble comes and a situation goes from bad to worse, this is not the time to doubt the promises for the righteous that you find in scripture. As long as God is with you, you can make it. John 1, 5 and 4b says, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. So when negative situations come, and they will come, this is not the time to abandon your faith. It's not that I'm in denial because I know the situation looks bleak. I know the doctor's report was bad. I know I just got laid off. I know there's stress on the job and strife in relationship, but I will, listen, on purpose and intentionally exercise my faith to overcome whatever I am facing. Listen to this. There's a passage in Hebrews 12 and 1. This is one that the Lord gave to me as I was editing just this morning, Henry, so you won't have this one for the screen. David, you won't have this for the video. Hebrews 12 and 1 says that we got to lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. Sometimes, y'all hear me good now, you holding on to stuff, you holding on to people that you need to let go of. You know every time you hang out with Pookie and Chiquik on them, you get in trouble. Come on now, so sometimes we gotta lay aside the weight. Amen, because it's holding you back from where God wants to elevate you to. Come on, you ever been climbing, uh, you're climbing the stairs or something and you, you carrying something, it, it slows you down. But if you leave it there, you can elevate quickly, amen? Now listen, in a church environment, it's not just the pastor's faith that governs the outcome. I praise God that my faith is strong and it gets stronger every day as I study God's word. 
However, the church is a corporate body, which means that when we set out to accomplish something here at the Tabernacle of Praise Christian Church, not only must I be in faith, I got to teach this over and over and over again so that every partner can be in faith for the fulfillment of whatever it is we're trying to accomplish. I cannot assume that because I taught something years ago that everybody still got it. Amen. Faith comes by hearing, not having heard. And that I-N-G means that's repetition. What am I teaching? Vicki, am I right about that? That I-N-G means it's a continuous action going on. Like the passage I referenced earlier from 2 Peter 1 and 12, I have to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them. You know them already. Amen. But when I remind you, it just fortifies it. Amen. 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 Knowing that all the promises of God are received by faith. That's what really helped me understand the fairness of God. Because, you know, early in my faith walk, Henry, I couldn't understand why some folk had stuff and some folk didn't. Some folk had a lot of stuff. And some folk had practically nothing. It didn't seem like God was being fair because the ones who had a lot and the ones who had a little, they were faithful at church. I used to see them come to church, so that just didn't make sense to me. Anybody else ever thought like that? Amen. I know you have, but you won't admit it with your little holy self. Amen. I, I, I thought about that. But you know what I thought about? I discovered in the, in the word in, in Galatians 3 and 14 that all the promises of God are received by faith. So it's critical. It's vital. It's essential. It is crucial that the word of God gets, don't, don't miss this, mixed with faith. Hmm. Because one without the other will not get you the results that you desire. How can you say that, Pastor? It's validated by the word. Hebrews 4 and 2. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being, here it is, mixed with faith in those who heard it. So listen, I want you to profit from every word you receive from me and any other of the anointed uh, preachers and teachers that, that stand here. And that's the reason I preach and teach about it over and over because you cannot have faith for something that you have not heard the word about God about. Does that make sense? Listen, there are people in church who have heard the word about salvation and they got saved. Praise God. There are people who heard the word about not neglecting the assembly of the saints and they are faithful in their attendance, both physically and remotely. There are people who heard the word about sanctification and holiness and they're striving to live a holy life. However, there are some who heard the word about divine, who have not heard the word about divine healing. They have not heard the word about victory in spiritual warfare. They've not heard the word about material and financial prosperity. So they don't know how to exercise their faith for something that, desire, that God desires for them because they have not received the word about it. I've been going to church for as long as I can remember, but I don't remember divine healing being taught. I don't remember uh, uh, victory in spiritual warfare being taught. And I certainly didn't hear anything about material and prosperity, uh, financial prosperity being taught. Praise God that I have parents who encouraged and instilled in me and my siblings that we could have and do anything that we set our mind to do. But listen, I had no idea that the secrets were in the word of God. You, you know what, Frank? I was under the assumption that secular learning, y'all know, reading, writing, arithmetic, look, and networking uh, was, was what I needed to do to be successful in the secular arena. So I had no expectation of being successful by applying biblical principles in anything other than the church environment. I had no expectation of living at a level of abundance in every area of my life by applying practical and pragmatic principles as well as spiritual principles. But once I received the knowledge, I began to apply. Faith came forth. And ain't no stopping me now. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know nothing is beyond my reach because my faith.
can work with my expectations. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, and my hope is my expectation for grand and glorious things for me, my family, and my church family. Now, that was good news for me. That was good news for me, Shannon, because I always wanted stuff. I just didn't know I had the right to want them without being called carnal-minded. Come on now. You, you know sometime even now, you tell folk about something you want to get, oh, you just, all you think about is stuff. He said, he came that I might have life and have more abundantly. That's stuff. So listen, regardless of what's going on in the world, pandemic, vacillating economy, racial bias, social and uh, economic injustice, chaos and confusion in government, crime in our communities, for the believer, when you exercise your faith and you stand on the promises you find in the word of God, you'll be able to do the supernatural holy when you allow God to perform extreme makeovers in your life as often as necessary. Come on, if you receive this word, come on, stand with me and let's give God praise. Come on, stand with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. As the invitation to discipleship is extended, if you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or if you're already a Christian and you want to become a local remote or honorary member of the Tabernacle of Praise. If you're present in the sanctuary and I'm looking around, look like all of us are family, but I never know when I'm looking behind these masks. Amen. So if you're here today and you want to make a commitment to the Lord, please get your information to uh, Minister Hill. She's right down front, my right, your left, before you leave today. If you're listening via conference call or viewing us online, please send your contact information or any questions you might have about this ministry to Lab Hill 60 at gmail.com, or you can text your information to 901-319-5588. Amen? Amen. God bless you. you. may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Were you blessed by anything today? <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, let's give God praise. Now's the time for us to be a blessing in the, to the Lord in our giving. Amen? Amen? Amen. God bless you. Good morning, everyone, everyone present here and everyone that's on virtual on our virtual lines this morning. Praise God for the blessed word that our pastor has whetted our appetites this morning. So I don't know about you, but I'm waiting on the rest of those sessions on Extreme Makeover. Our giving affirmation comes from Luke 638, and it goes like this. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, press down. Shaken together and running over will, will, <coughs> will be poured out into your lap. For with the measure you measure, I'm sorry, for with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Amen. To those present and virtual top partners and friends, we'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for the continued financial support that you have uh, given for this ministry. For the benefit of the first time listeners and visitors who might desire to support us financially, these are the methods by which you may give. You may text TOP, T-O-P, to 833-245-7470 and follow the prompts. The next option is to download the TOP app from the Apple Store for iPhone users or the Google Play Store for Android users. Then click, then click on the giving icon at the bottom. You may also mail your contribution. Yep, that's the old-fashioned way, but it still works. Tabernacle of Praise, Christian Church, 4325 Hex Cross Road, Memphis, Tennessee, 38125. And for those of you who are present today, there will be uh, baskets in the rear for your gifts. As a friendly reminder, the strategic seed for the month of September is $40.29, taken from Isaiah 40.29. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Amen. As we continue to adjust to this new normal caused by this pandemic, life continues to throw so much at us that we sometimes get weak and weary. If this describes you or someone you may know, 
then sow this strategic seed on their behalf that God will grant you the strength you need to endure and succeed through any challenge you encounter. Amen. We would also like to invite you to continue to join us. And if you haven't ever done so, please think about joining us for the Wednesday morning Power Up prayer session from 5.30 to a.m. to 6 a.m. Central Standard Time and our evening Bible study, 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can join us by simply dialing 732-434-2913. It is recommended that you dial in about 10 minutes before time in order to ensure your connection. And I know for a fact that you would be truly blessed spiritually. Finally, as Pastor Nate said, we don't see any visitors. I do recognize, I do see someone, but I'm not sure if he's a first time visitor or not. But sir, would you like to stand and provide your name and how you heard about us? Oh, all right. Well, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. We hope and pray that you have been encouraged today and that you will come back and see us soon. Thank you. Amen. 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 Well, it's certainly my hope and prayer that uh, something has been shared today that will strengthen each and every one of us who are here and those who are on the line, strengthen us in our spiritual walk. Amen. Amen. Uh, I just want to make this announcement. We know we, I, I share with you all the time that we have certainly been blessed by the anointed men and women of God that we have to come and preach and teach the word. Amen. But for those who are here, you know, we're missing a few, so you can call them and those who are on the line. Uh, yeah, but what I, what I think is a special treat. Uh, there's a young lady that's going to be teaching, amen, on, on Wednesday evening that I don't think she's taught on Wednesday evening here, but she's uh, uh, shared with us inspirational thoughts doing our power up. Our own first lady is going to bring us the word on Wednesday, amen? Amen. 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 So uh, she's, uh, she's uh, been anxious and looking forward to it. I think every week she asks me, is it my time? No, not yet. Not yet. Amen. So, so, so we... We're, we're looking forward to it. We're looking forward to it. And uh, we hope that this will be the start of her being in a regular rotation. Amen? Amen. Amen. No pressure. No pressure, boo. Amen. No pressure. Amen. Is there anything else we need to make mention of before we uh, dismiss? Let us stand. Our benediction will come from a passage from Romans 5 and 13. It says, May the God of hope... Fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope today and forever in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks so much for being here.